In today's video, we're going over top 10 things that every cyclist should own. Seeing as there's still a massive increase of people riding bikes, I thought I'd continue with my series of videos for beginner riders and do my top 10 items that I think everybody should own. These are the ones that just come to mind for me, so uh, feel free to put your suggestions in the comments as well. Let's get right into it. Number one. Pretty self-explanatory, this one. Always carry a spare tube on you. This does apply to you tubeless guys as well, but most beginners will be starting on clinches, so a spare inner tube is gonna save the day if you have a puncher. You don't wanna be using up other people's time if you're on a group ride and you have to repair an inner tube, so carrying a spare one with you and then going home and repairing your tube separately in your own time is a better way to do it. Always carry at least one. I always have one in my saddlebag. I actually have two tubalitos because they're even smaller than a standard butyl tube. Also, make sure it's the right size. If it doesn't fit, then you might as well not be carrying one at all. Patch kits. Believe it or not, inner tubes are repairable and you can repair them with patch kits. Now, I've got a few different types here. That one is for tubalitos. It's tiny, thin, you can fit that. It's basically like carrying nothing no excuses. Pre-glued patch kits, get it the right way around, like this one by Park, are fantastic for carrying around with you on a ride and using out on the road in an emergency. You don't want to be holding up your group, but if you used up your spare inner tube, this is the next thing you want to move on to. They're pre-glued, so you just peel them off, stick them where the hole is, pump it up, and it should be fine until you then deflate it again at some point where these kind of come a bit loose because the glue is not that strong. But it will get you out of a sticky situation, and I think there's like 10 of these in a packet. You'd be hard pressed to get through all 10 of them on a ride. So no excuses, tiny, doesn't weigh anything, take one of them with you. If you're getting serious about repairing your tubes, you can then use one of these. A little bit bigger, kind of thing that you want to take with you if you're bike packing or touring. The boxes will have different sizes of patch and a little tube of glue. Much better glue than what's on here. It's a more solid fix, but it's the kind of thing that you want to do at home in your own time. A multi-tool with a chain tool on it. Now I talked about this one in my top five tools. I've ended up using this chain tool recently. It's really, really good having one of these out on a ride if you do snap a chain. Along with that, it's got all the most common Allen key and Torx sizes on it. So most home jobs, you can do with one of these guys. If you're just starting out, one of these is fine. You don't need a whole set of Allen keys. Once things get more serious, you might want to invest in that for your home use, uh, but these are absolutely fine in the meantime. Like I said, the chain tool bit is really useful. Uh, this means that if you snap a chain or if you break your mech hanger in a crash, you can completely re-lengthen your chain, single speed it if you've got the skills and keep rolling in an emergency. A Ziploc bag. You can get a fancy one like this, waterproof, or you can get one from a supermarket that you'd use in a kitchen. Uh, you want them to be about this size, so it'll fit a phone and your credit cards in. So when you're pulling stuff out of your pocket, you're not gonna drop one single item out by accident. Uh, you're also gonna keep everything dry, so if it rains, you haven't got to worry. And smaller stuff that might get lost, like patch kits, you can put in there as well. These are so, so cheap, and it's gonna save you loads of hassle in the long run. Now the two most common methods of pumping up a tire when you're out on the road is with a mini pump or with CO2. CO2 is fantastic, it's really, really quick. It's the lazy man's method because all you do is press a button. You can get high pressure really easily, but it is a finite resource depending on how much you want to carry with you. CO2 canisters can be quite heavy. Mini pump lasts forever. You want to make sure you get a good one. Uh, this one's 20, 30 quid, but you can easily get 80 PSI out of it. You don't want to get one of those super cheap pumps and then not be able to get enough pressure from it. Uh, you also want to consider getting one with a hose. Uh, this means that it just screws onto your valve and then you can pump it up without the risk of breaking the valve. I think these ones work better personally, but there's no problems with the ones that just clamp on as well. If you're going to be touring or bike packing, then you could consider a small foot pump. Design make one called the Mini floor HP, I'll put a, put a picture up here. We had that when we rode through the USA and it has a little attachment that uh, you can put on the floor, put your foot on and get even more leverage. Easily over 100 PSI out of that guy. So mini pump over CO2 because there's no limit of how many times you can use it. Everybody's time is more valuable than pumping up a tire with this at home. It just takes too long. You can't get the pressure you want. It doesn't have a pressure gauge on it. A good track pump is going to save you time. You'll be able to kind of get the right pressure. These things aren't that accurate, but they're okay. If you're using tubeless, then you probably want a track pump with a little pressure storage thing in it. So you can pump it all up and then release all the pressure at once and seat your tire. Again, Lazine is a fantastic brand when it comes to pumps. Um, not sponsored. They just make good stuff. Number seven. <laughs> 
No matter where you are in the world, you might be in a situation where you can only pay for stuff in cash. I always carry a tenner with me in the UK, just in case. Make sure if it's paper money, you put it inside your Ziploc bag, uh, because you don't want it getting wet and um, having to pay for something with a soggy, soggy banknote. You never know what's gonna happen on the road. You might end up with a catastrophic mechanical and need a lift somewhere. And having that cash at your disposal can really help things. They haven't got to be expensive ones, but you do get what you pay for when it comes to quality and clarity of a lens. Obviously, if it's sunny, it's nice to wear sunglasses so you can see better. But I often wear clear lenses to stop shit from getting in your eyes and as a hay fever sufferer to stop pollen getting in your eyes. Now, in the unlikely event of having a crash, you may fall on your face and wearing glasses made of glass could mean that you end up with a smashed lens in your face and you don't really want that. I would always go for plastic ones. Again, if you go for the bigger brands, they tend to be better made plastic and less likely to shatter. Bottle of chain lube. You always want to have one of these. You can get dry lube, wax, anything is better than nothing. This isn't really a thing that you want to be borrowing off people and it's not really good etiquette to go and ask your bike shop for a bit either. Uh, so just have one of these at home. It lasts a long, long time. Make sure your chain is nice and clean before putting it on and uh, you should be able to do quite a few kilometers from one application. Again, like with most things in cycling, you do get what you pay for. So if you buy shit chain lube, you're probably going to end up having to apply it more often. I tend to stick with wet chain lubes, but make sure my chain's nice and clean before. Let it soak in overnight and then wipe off the excess and get really good results. I used to use wax as well, which is a faster solution. So if you're looking to save a few watts, uh, then wax is an excellent option. It's also a lot cleaner, but definitely requires more applications and doesn't work so well in the wet. Number 10 on today's list. I've left it till last because it is probably the most expensive one, a work stand. Now this did make my top five tools video as well. It's just so useful having a stand that you can put your bike in and walk 360 degrees around it. Modern work stands are designed really well. This is a park one and it folds down really small. My recommendation is to go for one with a clamp. You can clamp the seat posts. They're compatible with pretty much any bike. And as soon as you have one, I'm sure your friends will be asking to borrow it all the time. So those are my personal top 10 essential items. I think they're all fairly affordable and will definitely save you some time and money in the long run. As I said earlier, let me know in the comments down below what your top items are. I'm sure I've missed some. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like this video and I'll see you guys soon.